start with questions, and then we got microphones on either side, so raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Come on, Derek. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Coach, how did the scrimmage go yesterday in general? Um, it went well. Um, guys were flying around. We stayed pretty healthy. Um, but you had heard some pass hitting and um, guys getting out. I thought it was a good scrimmage, um, both sides of the ball. We did some really good, th some really good things, and we did some things that we got to be better at. Uh, both offensively and defensively, but overall, I thought it was a good sc scrimmage considered um, the situation that we were in. Um, it was good. Morning, Coach. Good morning. Um, just it, we're less than two weeks now until first game. When do you plan on naming a starting quarterback? Um, before the boys' game, you know, before we play it. Um, I promise you, we will have a starting quarterback, and I promise you, we will announce it. Um, before we play that game. But um, don't necessarily have a timetable when we're going to name a starting quarterback uh, when we feel like it's, um, it's right and best um, that we do it, we'll do it. And like I said, I promise you I'm going to announce it, and I promise you it's going to be before the boys' game. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. That being said, how close has this competition uh, been at quarterback? Uh, it's, it's been really close. Uh, I've been impressed with uh, all three guys. You know, um, just the competition going back and forth, and they all has gotten revved with the ones and the twos. And to see, like I said last week, to see those guys being able to execute the offense, uh, whether they're in there with the ones or the twos, was really impressive uh, to me. And, and all three guys were able to do that. And, um, just watching the scrimmage yesterday, again, I was impressed with those guys, especially taking care of the football um, and then, then just running the offense, you know, and even Jordan Travis got in and did some really good things um, in the scrimmage yesterday. And um, he said they all, they all threw touchdowns. And, um, they took care of the ball. Coach, how's the offensive line shaping up for you? They're uh, shaping up pretty well. They've, they're bigger, they're stronger, um, and they're playing well together. Um, again, I, we're, we're making some plays, and to see us make some plays on our defenses, um, it's good to see. And it all starts up front. You know, just seeing those guys, the synergy that they have, and, and playing with one another, it's, it's been, been good to see. You know, and uh, I'm excited whether those guys are. and. Um, I'm also excited. We we have two more weeks to to be ready um, for Boise. So um, if they continue the process and the progress that they're making right now, um, and we'll all be happy. Coach, with the uh, with the changes on defense, just what have you seen from the pass rush, and just uh, has it gotten home as much as you'd hoped it would? Um, it's. Well, see, that's kind of set up question right there, okay? Because I don't want it to get home against our offense, you know. But um, no, I, I would say um, I've been impressed. Like I always said, I've been impressed with what um, Coach Barnett is doing on defense and, and how he's utilizing our guys um, to create pass rush, you know, and, and utilizing our guys to be in position to create takeaways, get the ball back for our. Um, and, um, it's been going well in practice, you know. It's been some good, it's been some bad, you know. And um, But I'm, I'm happy where we're at and kind of like I said about the O-line, uh, glad that we have two more weeks to continue to get to um, get sharp on some things and, and to be ready to roll. But um, I like it because, I mean, we can find different, different ways to create pressure, not just one player doing it, but you can get there um, a lot of different ways. So... Um, Excited about it. Uh, stay over there and go to Ryan. Morning, Coach. Good morning. 
Uh, when we got a chance to talk to Coach Bryles a little bit ago, he talked about how you both felt it was imperative for Randy Clements to come in with him. Just how useful has it been to have a guy who's been around Coach Bryles for so long when you're installing a new scheme? How useful has it been for the offensive line to be able to get up to speed with a guy who knows exactly what his OC is looking for? Well, I think it's um, great when you have – I mean, I'll go back to chemistry and, and being on the same page. And when you got 11 guys, you're trying to – get in the same page is imperative that they all, coaches and all, know exactly what's going on. And uh, that's helped us tremendously, uh, being on the same page. Not only has it helped the, the players, but it helped the other coaches that's um, on the offense side of the ball too, uh, being on the same page and uh, being able to execute. But I also think it helps having a year um, in the system and, and a year understanding, again, tempo. I mean, from a play standpoint, you'll see a lot of the same plays. You know, we just go about teaching it differently and, and operating it a little differently than, than, than the past. So um, I think they both do a good job of teaching, and that's, again, imperative to uh, having success on the offense side of the ball and, uh, and the showing and just some of the executed, execution that's going on in practice. Hey, Coach. Uh, Throughout the year, something that you said you wanted to see is competitive depth throughout the roster, you know, especially with some of the injuries that you've had. How have you seen that on display so far? Actually, um, it's, I don't know you should, I should say it's, it's been good because you want your players out there um, working with us. But um, our younger guys are getting a lot more reps, and, and um, you can see them getting better because of the reps. And I think that's going to pay off for us big time as we get into the season. Again, um, like you said, Early, we want some competitive depth, and it was imperative um, in training camp that we try to create that. And and unfortunately, we had some guys go down, but fortunately, these guys are being able to get reps, and you see them improving daily, even some of the freshman guys um, that just got here. Uh, being able to get the amount of reps that they're getting now is really paying off for them. Yeah, Coach, through, uh, halfway through camp now, who are maybe a few of the true freshmen that absolutely will not redshirt? Um, I can't necessarily say absolutely will not redshirt, but um, I can see a lot of those guys playing. Um, you kind of put me on the spot. I can name a few, and if I don't name one, I get in trouble. So um, all of our guys have a chance to, to play, and I know that's not necessarily the answer you want, but um, I don't want my players mad at me. I'm just playing. Um, I can see um, a guy like Travis J, um, Akeem Dent, um, Brendan Gant. I'm thinking about the secondary. Brownlee, uh, Green. I mean, all those guys are pretty good. Woody, the third. He's, they're pretty talented. You watch the scrimmage, you're like, wow. You know, some of these kids just came out of high school. You know, but they're very competitive. So. Um, we're not going to put any limits on them. You know, we're going to allow those guys to continue to compete, and, and if they can help us, we're going to play them and allow them to help us, you know. But we're going to make sure we're playing the right guys. And, and same thing at linebacker position. Uh, Kevon Green has been very, very impressive at linebacker. I've been really, really impressed with that young man. Um, I can see him possibly helping us too. I mean, he's been really, really impressive. Um, but same as um, – Deloach and um, Quayshawn Fuller up front. Uh, we talk about Dante Lucas doing a good job. Mari Smith is another kid that's been really impressive um, on the offensive line, and um, Ira Henry as well. You know, so I named a few for you, uh, fellas. If I didn't name you, I still love you, and I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I promise. Willie, uh, you spoke during the offseason about how difficult it was for some of the players to go through a coaching change. Cam is a guy who also saw tremendous production his freshman year and then didn't have that success last year. Um, some his some reasons probably he's accountable for, but others around him. How, how have the last eight or nine months gone with him? Did he ever waver? Did he think about seeing what else was out there, or um, has he been committed? Uh, Cam's been committed. Uh, from day one. I mean, you look on him, he's got it tattooed on him. You know, he's been a no, he's, uh, he's, no, he's a no through and through. And I just, I feel like towards the end of last season, Cam kind of really committed himself to being 
the very best back um, that he can be in. And, and you start to see a difference there towards the end of the season um, in him and, and then this entire offseason. I think he just he, – he's committed to being the best Cam he can be. And I say that not just football, just um, academically as well. You know, Cam has been top-notch academically, you know, off the field. Um, he's been top-notch and, and just – being a leader on this football team. And I'm um, watching him in practice in that scrimmage yesterday. Um, I think Cam's going to be back in Cam freshman mode. And necessarily, we don't want him to be the freshman mode. We want him to be better than the freshman mode. And, um, but I also think he's, he's mature and, and he under, understood, again, what we went through. And, uh, and also understand that um, what we got to do in order to uh, not see that again. So um, I think he's committed to doing that. The secondary, obviously, a lot comes back from last year, but it seems like you just mentioned all those freshmen when talking about how impressive they've been. I guess, how impressed have you been with really that entire freshman DB class, and what can them kind of pushing as hard as they can do for those vets who are kind of trying to keep their spots? Well, uh, like I said, I'm very impressed with all those guys, and um, I think every defensive back, even the older guys, I tell you, they're impressed with them as well. You know, but... Um, <clears throat> Those guys, just because I'm impressed with them, doesn't mean they, they have jobs. They've got to take jobs. And the guys that's in front of them also understand that they can take the job. And I think um, because of that competitiveness, um, it's allowed us to get better overall. Everybody's gotten better back there. And it's, again, it's competitive every single day. Um, those guys are getting after it. And it's pretty cool when you can rotate some guys in there and still get the same production out of it. So, um, again, that's how it should be. And again, it's making each other better and um, practices. Uh, like I say, it's very, very competitive because of it. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Yeah. Um, last year, you spoke about um, when you handed over the play calling to Walt Bell, just how it freed you up a bit to be able to do some things at practice. Do you feel that same level of comfort this year? And how has the transition been with Bryles? Um, I feel better this year. Um, I feel better about everything this year. Um, focus is so much better um, as a team. Um, I love our chemistry as a team, as a staff. Um, and I love being able to, to go around and, and help out at every spot and, and help coach every spot and making sure we're doing what we say we're going to do. And that's been fun for me personally. And um, I'm sure the you know, our players, um, I don't know, sometimes they might get tired of seeing me around, but um, it's been good just to be around and helping out in every aspect and, um, and learning. You know, you still learn it too, and, but it's been good, you know, and I trust all of our guys, you know, not just Coach Browse. And, again, I'm being able to go around and watch our guys teach and, and, and drill, and um, I think when you see it yourself, there's no, there's no need to – worry about anything or, or trust, you know that they're doing what we say we're going to do and, and getting our guys better. And, and um, I'm happy with that out of all of our guys. Coach, um, I think when you were at USF, you visited Baylor mm -hmm. and to learn more about their offense. How much of that was a factor in bringing in Coach Bryles and, and Coach Clements? Um, it, was, it was huge um, because of uh, – sharing the same philosophy and um, Coach Browse understanding exactly what I'm trying to get out of our offense. And, um, and Coach Browse had success doing it. You know, I think that's probably bigger than anything is not only he knew what we wanted, you know, but he's had success doing it uh, everywhere it's been. And so uh, for our players and not to try to reinvent the wheel was, was very, very important too and make sure our guys continue to grow at what we're trying to get accomplished. Morning, Coach. Good morning. Have you sat down with Coach Browse yet to kind of figure out how your game flow or your workflow is going to be on a game week? And then also in game, how interactive will you be in that offense? Because I know you guys go so fast, so it's going to be hard to really be I'll, too interactive with it. It won't be hard to interact. When I want something, I'll, hey, I would love to see this. Uh, it'll be pretty pretty simple. Um, but I think, again, as a play caller myself, um, you kind of understand when and when not to say something to someone when they're in the rhythm and 
they got a flow going. And but uh, again, if there's something that I see or want, then I'm gonna say and get. You know, <laughs> whether it's offensively or the defense side of the ball. So, um, but I think again, being a play caller and understanding that myself, I think you know when and when not to kind of interrupt the guy that's in rhythm and got it going. I guess the other thing was like, in, during the week, if you guys figure out how that's going to work out, you guys just, you know, certain times during the week you sit down, scout the opponent, do that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we have game preparation where we all sit down and meet and, and talk about uh, the game plan going into that week and, and what we're going to do in certain situations and making sure that we're all on the same page. So um, usually that's early in the week of game week where we talk about that game and, and what we're going to do and, Again, like in certain situation, uh, exactly what we're going to do in those certain situations. So those things will be uh, talked out early in the week, um, each week of each opponent that we play. Coach, um, with with the tempo, just how far has it come during fall camp, and how did you think the offense handled uh, the tempo in the spring or um, in the scrimmage? It's um, it's gotten better. It's it's a lot better than where we were before, and. Again, like I say, having a year of understanding it always help our guys. Um, again, that last year it was a lot of change with a lot of young guys, so it took a, took a minute. Um, I think the way we operating it now is, is different than what we did last year. It's a little faster, you know, and I think um, <clears throat> the way we operate allows us to go faster, and, but it also simplifies some things for guys so that we can go faster. And, um, not having as many mistakes as we did before, and that's always good. And uh, not that they're gone completely, but um, it's so much better, you know. But I think that's, that happens with reps and, and a better understanding and knowing what to do, you know. But again, having guys that understand it and can coach it <clears throat> helps as, as well. Hey, Willie, we've uh, we've heard a lot about Kendall Browse, how he's competitive, uh, how he's really hands on, and I know we've asked a lot about how he is an X and O's guys in scheme, but what have you seen from him personality-wise and what is he bringing to, to the offense and to the program in general? Well, um, Kendall's a good good dude. He's a good dude. Um, um, he's a good football coach. Uh, I think he does a great job, job of teaching our guys. and um, I've been really impressed just how he's got our, our staff on the same page and, and working well together. You know, I think that's – that's really important, you know, in order for the entire offense to go, they all got to be on the same page. And um, I thought he's come in and done a great job of, of getting that done. And, and we get some results behind it. You know, it's been pretty cool to watch. So um, he's good. He's a good dude. He's good to talk to. He's funny. Um, kind of a little chip on the shoulder, and kind of like our team, you know. And, um, but he's, he's a football coach. And then Willie had a follow-up, but maybe surprising. We have readers asking a lot about Marvin Wilson and Tamari and Terry. Are you still optimistic about those guys being ready for, for Boise at this time? You don't believe me, do you? Uh, I, I believe you, but I have okay. a lot of people asking me about it. So, uh, uh, Yeah, those guys will be ready. Uh, we we'll in there. Um, I think you'll probably see um, a little more out of both of them um, this upcoming week. So um, they both are rehabbing really well. Um, so... Terry run yesterday, well, two days ago, and was impressed. And um, I know they're eager to get back out there and get going. So like I said, I'm sure they'll be back soon. You got time for a couple more? Go back to the right. Coach, uh, you mentioned that the team has a chip on its shoulder. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about uh, where they are in terms of their confidence and what you've done in the off season to, I don't know restore the swagger of the team and of the program? Well, I think, I think to restore that swagger that comes with winning. And our guys understand we got to win to get anything that we want. We got to go and, go and win. But I think with our football team, now our guys understand what it takes to win. You know, you just don't show up on Saturdays and think you're going to win a ball game. You know, and um, those little things that we're asking them to do, they're doing them now. You know, and they're holding their teammates accountable to doing those things to setting the standard to what we want it to be and making sure everybody within the program is, is, is doing it that way. And our, our players are doing that now, you know, but they also understand that 
in order in order to change any perception we have of our football team, you do that by winning. You know, so uh, we got to do the little things daily and the de details and what it takes to win. And again, I'm excited because our guys are starting to, starting to understand those little things now and that they do matter. And, and I think if they continue to do that, then winning will come and they all be excited and, and they all will be get back to their confidence and, um, and how they felt when they decided to come to Florida State University. Back over the way. Coach. Wait, got from the way. <laughs> What's I gotta the, go take a picture. Hey, what's, <laughs> what's the biggest difference? You know, you, you've been here. This is your second fall practice. What's the biggest difference between this time this year and this time last year? Um, I think the focus out of everyone, um, and and the effort out of everyone. I mean, it's it's consistently uh, you're getting it daily out of our guys and um, in our staff, and, and that's been impressive. And but that's how it should be. In year two, you know, the, uh, the focus is there. Is there. Our players want to practice. You know, we hadn't had a practice where we didn't want to practice. You know, um, I thought IMG was was great for our guys because we had a lot of sudden change because of the weather, and they could have easily just said, no, I don't want to do it, or just didn't feel like going back out there. And uh, But our guys came out focused, and those practices was kind of some of our best practice. And that was I was impressed with, again, just – how they respond to that, but just they love for wanting to be out there to get better now, and uh, that's part of it. Right, last one, Alpha. Coach, kind of going along with that, just for you, what have you learned from, from year one to year two and maybe something that, I don't know, uh, that, that you've tried to approach differently heading into this or this fall camp compared to last year? Well, I learned everything about this university um, and, um, and have a better understanding of – Pretty much everything around here, and sometimes you can take that for granted. You know, you go to a new place, and um, there's a there's a lot of learning. There's a lot of people you got to learn, and um, a lot of different different things other than just football. You know, but um, understanding our players better, and, and which has been great, but also understanding what our players need and it's probably been better than anything, and making sure that we get them what they need and. And then making sure our players um, live up to their their part of the bargain too, you know. So um, I don't think you ever stop learning. I'm gonna learn something new this year, you know. But um, I do like where our football team is. I like where our staff is, and um, we got two more weeks and to continue to get better. But I'm gonna be excited to see our guys go out and and compete and show you all what the, the new 2019 FSU football team is. Can't wait. Appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Go Nose.